A sea of red on this near side, being held a lot by the fans of St. Patrick's Athletic. Bohemians in their change colours today, as were Portsmouth three and a half hours ago. But then the favourites did win that final. Paul Byrne is having a magnificent season so far for St. Patrick's Athletic, their leading scorer with five goals. Let's have a look at the team news for this cup final. The big news for St. Patrick's Athletic is just like Shelburne in 2005, their captain misses the final through injury. Damian Lynch picked up a hamstring knock in last week's 1-0 win over Dundalk and will be a spectator today. Derek Pender starts instead while Dave Mulcahy is promoted back into the first 11 in place of Derek Doyle. Gareth Coughlin is an 11th hour replacement for Dave McAllister who has a stomach bug. Only two players in action for Pats today have won the Satanta Sports Cup. Dan Connor winning it with Drogheda twice, though he missed the latter final through injury. Stuart Byrne arrived at the club in time to help them win the 2007 crown. It's his third final, each with a different club. Big news from a Bohemian's viewpoint also. 20-year-old Aaron Green is given just his third ever start proposed after his League Cup goal at Monaghan midweek and assist at Sligo. Jason McGuinness starts in place of Ken O'Man, who is out with hamstring trouble. Owen Heary and Anto Murphy have both passed late fitness tests and both starts. Paul Keegan and Brian Shelley were both involved in Drogheda's two successes. Jason Byrne and Owen Heary were both Shell's players when they lost to Linfield in the first final in 2005. Like manager Pat Fenlon, this is the only domestic trophy neither's ever won. Let's hear from him and from Pete Mahan. They are both with Adrian Barry. And it's first to Pete Mahan that we go. And Pete, it's the 20-year anniversary of your first cup final. If that didn't end all that well, we will be hoping for a different outcome today. Oh, yeah, of course I am. Yeah, it's a very, very important game. It's a great competition, a fantastic crowd here, a great occasion. Just hope that we can uh, justify the occasion. So Pat's had an unusual uh, route to the final, Pete, but no better opposition than Bohemians in the final. But they're the best mark for everybody, the top team in the country. So we'll see how we get on. And over to Pat Fenlon, uh, your opponent today. Pat, uh, you've not got a great record uh, in this one. You've got pretty much every other medal in the Irish game. It'd be nice to put an end to that today. Yeah, well, it's about bowls today. It's not about Pat Fenlon. It's, it's the club looking to win the trophy. First time they've been in it, and it would be a great achievement. But we know we're going to be in for a very tough game. Pats have had a great start to the season, and we're going to be at, a, at, to be at our best to win the game. Three previous games here in Tallis since this uh, beautiful ground opened, and you've yet to win. It'd be nice also to end that run today, wouldn't it? Yeah, but it's against a different team, so it doesn't really come into it. No, it'd be nice to win the game. It doesn't matter where it is. You know, it's a cup final, and we want to win it. Thank you, Pat. Best of luck. Back to you, Will. Thank you. A big day for all from Messrs Fenlon and Mahan and referee from Antrim, Alan Black, who officiated Wales against Sweden back in March. His assistants Gareth Eakin and Andrew Neeson. Fourth official is Tom Connolly. Big day for the mascots, Connor Kane and Rory Dalton for Pats, Emma Shelley and Jack Burke for Bows, and our own mascot up here, Felix Healy. Yes, well, it's a fantastic stadium. Second time I've been to tell us fantastic job they've done here, Sean McGrovers. The pitch is absolutely fantastic tonight, and hopefully we'll get a great game. It's a beautiful ground, a beautiful stadium, beautiful weather as well. There are our mascots as well. What a massive day for them. Stuart Byrne is substitute captain today because of Lynch's hamstring injury. Owen Heary having to pass a late fitness test in order to captain Bohemians today and win a trophy that he missed out on in 2005 he was injured for that decider Barry Murphy in goal for Bohemians today the signing from Shamrock Rovers how often he played here last season Chris O'Connor on the bench for Bose Dan Connor on the bench for Pats because Gary Rogers starts instead what a great honor for both clubs to have two strong goalkeepers attached. Well, there's a guy in shot there who was massive in the semi-final games against Linfield. Paul Keegan, as Peter Hutton said, the midfield battle tonight. Mulcahy and Byrne are going to sit and defend as, as a, just in front of the back four. And whether both can get past that and get at the back four. And Keegan will be central to that tonight. St. Patrick's Athletic have never won an All-Ireland Cup. They've never played in an All-Ireland Cup final before. The last one that Bohemians won was 1945. On this weekend, 20 years ago, Pete Mann was managing non-league St. Francis in the FAI Cup final. 30,000, magnificent crowd at Lansdowne Road to watch them beaten by Bray, a John 
Ryan Hattrick. The Minnows have been thwarted in England and Scotland today, but Cup Final Day in Ireland is all about these two Dublin heavyweights. Pats, the nominated home side, wearing their normal red, bows in their change colours of white. It's Powell's throw for Paul Keegan, twice a winner of this competition in 06 and 07. Likewise with Brian Shelley. Dan Connor has two winners' medals, but only played in one final. He was injured for the penalty win for Drogheda against Linfield at Windsor Park in 07, in which he can feature very well. Opportunities in here. Glenn Cronin aimed for the new man, Aaron Green. And what a day it is for this youngster, 20 years old. And it's only his third ever start for the club. What a week. Well, he's the baby in the squad. Very, very experienced squad of players. Very experienced team out tonight. Not far short of full strength. Very surprised, actually, uh, young Green's been given, or, you know, has been given the place. But uh, he not be short of men around him. So the two number ones are number one tonight, Gary Rogers and Barry Murphy. Both starting, they've been in and out and interchange throughout the season. Dan Connor, a late sizing pre-season for Pats and played in both semi-final games against Sligo. Chris O'Connor starting the season for Bowes, but Barry Murphy now making the place between the posts his own. But the one thing you always get a tall, unfortunately, Will, is a bit of a wind and it seems to have changed direction since kickoff. You know, it looked like, like uh, Bowes are playing with it now, where at the start the wind was blowing the opposite direction. Back by Guthrie and a long one. It'll be Connor Powell's throw, the young player of the year last season and one of four men involved today, named by Paul Doolan in the Ireland Under-23 squad when they play England in a 10 days' time down at the RSC in Waterford. They've improved the pitch down there quite a lot the past few seasons and there could be no better surface for a cup final than this today. Are you watching Wembley? Great cross by Powell and a good one and a good claim too by Gary Rogers. Well, that'll do the surpass. Faithful, the best of good. You know, the manager won't be happy the way they started. They haven't really got out of their own box. And here you can see the wind, the role that is played on that cross is blowing Gary Rogers from where he first thought it was going to land. And he was a full threat, he did really well. Gary Rogers signed last summer from Galway, who was on the bench for the two semi final games. He's launched that one long. It's met by the head of McGuinness and Murphy to claim. Near side for Connor Powell, but Killian Brennan couldn't keep it in. Man who played in this competition for Derry City, but without success. And now he's reached the final in Bohemian's first ever Satanta Sports Cup campaign. Derek Pender. Good ball for Stuart Byrne, captain for the day, and chipped it up. Aimed for Vinnie Faherty. Now a chance for Birmingham. Cross was good, header away, better by Keegan. Stuart Byrne went in again. Recycled well by Guy. Good cross, Faherty. Had support from Byrne in the middle, but went in the opposite direction. Couldn't find Gareth Cochran. I think Owen Heary was a wee bit. The days of him charging up the, the line like that, knocking the past people are long gone. But he was isolated there. But it's a good play by Pats. Good move over here on the right hand side between Pender and Guy. Talking to the Pats guys, they're going to try and put a lot of width into the match. The two sitting midfield players and try and push the full backs and the white players on. Headed on by Paul Byrne, who's having a smashing debut season with St. Patrick's Athletic having signed from Bray in the closed season. Scored in both legs of the semi-final, including that beauty up in Sligo. Long by Gary Rogers, there, defensively having a terrific season, Pats. Bows have had to come from behind an awful lot, but good for from their point of view. They're five unbeaten, whereas of the last eight, Pats have won six, lost two. Unbeaten, not uh, including penalties. 
we ought to point out the form stats all that is a draw but that's by the by here goes Ryan Guy with a chance to cut inside and a good chop down by Powell 21 international and now on the brink of being an under 23 the incident there, well, we're going to have to keep an eye on where, where Ryan Guy's pushed up, he's almost pushing up on Conor Powell, and he's, he's playing in a hole between Powell and Killian Brennan, and Killian Brennan was way out of position there, and if, if Pats can capitalise that on, capitalise on that, brother. Great noise, the Pats fans are on the same side as our cameras, the newly completed stand here at Tallis Stadium. Guy with the long throw, and that's a superb header, Faherty, which Barry Murphy did well to tip over. Yes, he wasn't taking any chances. Very theatrical throw in. You don't often see Rory Delap to this, but it's certainly very effective. A great flick on, and the second ball ends up being tipped over by the goalkeeper, taking no chances. Good effort. It's a nice party piece, it almost paid off. Here comes the next one, Gareth Coughlin with the corner, and it was a good deep one, met by the head of Anto Murphy, flicked up by Kenner, and Murphy to claim. Yeah, it was just an instinctive poke at the ball, unfortunately didn't get too much on it. It was better for Pats in the last three or four minutes. Just Paul Keegan was beaten to it, Connor Kenner just flicked a foot at it, no real trouble for Barry Murphy. Keegan won it first time, was aimed for Jason Byrne. Same with Brennan, good ball. Furious chase, which was won by Ian Birmingham, but was being balked by Byrne anyway. Red carded right at the end of that Shelburne Cup final defeat in 05. No Dublin side has ever won this trophy before, but that will change by nine o'clock at the latest. Although considering the first half they had at Wembley today, it looked as if they weren't going to score until Christmas. Eventually they did. by Powell. Faherty was beaten to it. This is Jason Byrne, who's as deep as you can get from his point of view. Now Guy, and Paul Byrne controlled it with his shoulder. Has a good touch. Back for Guy, whose acrobatics have thrilled us so much so far. Byrne, Paul Byrne's tame effort stopped by Barry Murphy, but Pats have got the bit between their teeth early on. Well, it's the right-hand side where Pats have been dangerous, particularly Ryan Guy. But there, I think it's Paul Byrne, he just doesn't catch it. Tries to curl it around the goalkeeper. Good knock down by Brennan for Jason Byrne, but out by Shane Guthrie. Birmingham on the chase, but too far beyond Anto Murphy. Yeah, we're up the Mystic ball there. The ball was almost to own Heary. And they could build on the right-hand side. Two Murphys on the pitch, three Burns. Both cup finals already today in England and Scotland. Nil-nil at half-time. And the omens are it'll be the same here because no League of Ireland side has ever scored in the first half. It was a Tata Sports Cup final. Somebody change that, please. Faherty. Did well. Guy. Did better, what a superb ball. Cochlin, good ball, Paul Byrne couldn't get the head behind it firmly. Brennan to mop up. What a lively start already. Yeah, they've got the dominant player on the pitch in the, in the opening. What, nine minutes gone has been Ryan Guy. Once again, he's played a brilliant ball with his left foot. Unfortunately, Paul Byrne wasn't able to get on the end of it. Jason McGuinness, who missed out on the League Cup final last season down at the RSC, who gets his start in a big cup final for Bohemians today. Birmingham, who was a regular here for Rovers last season. Along with Harry Murphy. Will be a Bowes throw. Anto Murphy doing his best to keep it in play. Well checked by Birmingham. I think Pink Man will know about Anthony Murphy's long throw as well. 
very careful of putting this in the box as well. It's a quick one for Harry, and the cross was good. Calls for a penalty in the edge of the area, ignored by Alan Black. I think Stuart Burns a very relieved man here. It's a very, very clumsy challenge. It's, you know, at worst, very clumsy challenge. Two penalties at Wembley. Should we have had one here? I think he's very lucky here. You know, I think that's what that's you know that's one he's put his hands on the player. He's very, very forced to get away with that. That's one of those where you get it's always a foul outside the box. Referees tend not to give him. But he was perfectly positioned. Alan Black. They may have reason to be relieved. It was heavily reported during the week that Stuart Burns already won two of these trophies, but when Drawda won their first in 2006, he was winning the most recent league title with Shells. I think he scored the winning penalty. He did against uh, Linfield. Up in Linfield, Winter. yes. Where there was a warm welcome for you that day, I remember. You were in studio, I think, at the uh, yes. at the stadium. It was armour played that we were OK. Touched out, Aaron Green doing his best. Good throw by Brennan for Powell. Last touch was off Killian Brennan that time. A major cup winner. Five times he's won a cup. Two FAI Cups and three League Cups between a combination of Bohemians and alongside Peter Hutton for Derrick. Jason Byrne got the foot in, but Keno will recover. And Birmingham long, aimed for Paul Byrne. Paul Byrne across, and a good ball for Guy. Funneling down the right and taking on Powell. Three to aim for in the middle but had to aim to keep his footing and didn't. Here goes Aaron Green. Brennan behind, and this is Keegan. Pats having the better of the opening chances, but Bo's opening up now. Shelley out wide, and a good flick by Jason Byrne, which Rogers had to act very, very quickly to push away. Yeah, we've seen that many times over the last 10 years in the League of Ireland. Great cross from Murphy. As we'll see here, just puts it to the near post. And Jason Byrne has been in great form. And a great save from Rogers. It's Killian Brennan who will take. Seven up for Bohemians. Here he making his way towards the edge of the area. And being well marshalled. And he got the connection. And McGuinness was in there too, but was jostling. Pats of the free kick. Well, it's a great, it's actually a great corner. I think Gary Rogers come in through a lot of bodies here. Great ball by Killing Brennan. Put it in a right area. I think Jason McGuinness has missed that actually. Should have got his head to it. I think he'd one eye on the goalkeeper. Okay, and Brennan and Anton Murphy have noticeably switched wings as well with Brennan taking it down the right hand side Murphy down the left and that's something that Pats have done quite a bit in recent games too had to change their side and their formation at the last minute due to David McAllister's stomach bug guy was originally due to be down the left hand side today down the right instead so Peters had to improvise yes yeah, Stuart Byrne it's very noticeable that every time that uh, Tim Pats attack Heath, the insurance man, he's just sitting in front of Guthrie and uh, and Kenna, and he'd be, you know, as Peter Hutton said earlier in the match, he'd be pivotal for St. Pat's defence today tonight. Picked up by Dave Mulcahy, but Guy won't get there that time. And the latest round of the ongoing battle with Connor Powell has been won by the Bows man, and when Guy does get a touch, it goes out. Yeah, we haven't seen too much on the other side. You know, St. Pat's expected a lot from young Coughlin, who's playing over on the other side. And he's going to be playing against one, probably the most experienced guys in the league. It's Stuart Byrne with options left and right, and to his left is Faherty. 
It was crowded out very quickly. Guys in support completely unmarked on this near side, but instead, Coughlin had a go, and it was worth what? Yeah, that's the kid we've just been talking about. He's a Timmin, probably not his strongest, but he's right. He wasn't afraid to have a smack. Pat Fenton's won 16 trophies north and south of the border. If they have changed, Killing Brennan, him and Murphy have swapped sides. Had by Cronin. And this is Brennan, and it's a good flick. Four green. And support from Anto Murphy. Won the throw off Ryan Guy, but won't be trying any acrobatics himself. Can get good distance on these throws, and he's done so. Aim for Keegan, who didn't get there. Burn did, but stopped swiftly by Rogers. Decent effort again. Paul Keegan this time topping up in the box. Free kicks being given against Jason McGuinness for a foul on Vinnie Fahati. And options here for St. Patrick's Athletic. No major trophy since the League Cup in 2003. And the big men are all going up. Shane Guthrie, the centre-back from Donegal. They breathe them big up there. Birmingham over it. And Birmingham to take. Aiming for six, Paul Byrne was up there. And Kenner in behind them also. And neither could beat Barry Murphy. Yeah, we see a fabulous ball here from Birmingham. Floated into the perfect Derry. It's one of those you're hoping it, it may even take a deflection. Wasn't able to get enough power on it. I think that might actually come off uh, Jason McGuinness. Kenneth has sent it long, aimed for Faherty again, who's having quite a battle with Brian Shelley. They've never met in a major cup final before, and I wouldn't blame you if you'd forgotten the only cup final that they ever have played in. It was the 1991 Leinster Senior Cup final and a win to a replay, which cannot happen here. It's extra time and penalties for the record. Pats won at 1-0 on a replay. Jason Byrne would have been a schoolboy at the time. Connor Powell. He was impressed brilliantly and made the full-back slot his own the past few seasons and more international recognition to come for him and Paddy Madden, who's on the bench tonight. Birmingham's head, he's also in that under-23 squad along with Paul Byrne. That 60 seconds is what we, more of what we expected this game was going to be. Bowes getting more possession, switching it around the, the pitch, their full-backs been involved, and that's the first time really City has gone, the first time we've really seen it. Thrown for Jason Byrne, but Birmingham to Shepherd out. And to win the throw. It was about that for a bonus. One by McGuinness aimed at Green. What a call up it is for him today. He's remained lively up front for. Bohemians and what's the biggest game with the 20-year-old's life? And that's aimed towards him and Keegan. But both well beaten to it by Guthrie. And here goes Guy. Stuart Byrne chipped it up. Aimed for his namesake, Paul, but couldn't find him this time. They will all be proud to wear the green in Waterford in a week and a half's time. See, that's more like it there, Paul Keegan getting on the ball. Picking up his midfield partner and both stringing a few passes together. One by Glenn, Gr Glenn Crown and aim for Anton Murphy. They've switched back again. Brennan on this near side and Murphy on the right and the far. Yeah, Murphy and Brennan will go back to the original positions again. Will Murphy wide on the right, Brennan wide left. Paul Burns also having the season of his life, and he's got a free kick too for Pats. Start to the weekend in top position, but Shamrock Rovers' late win at UCD put them above Pats. Dundalk top due to their draw, puts them ahead on goal difference, and 
coming out of Belfield just after Gary Twig had scored the winner last night late on against UCD was Pete Mahon. Can never stay away from watching football even on a night off. Even the night before a big cup final. Goes with the territory nowadays, Will. They did so much preparation nowadays and I'm surprised that the energy to play the match eventually. Here goes Powell and this is Brennan. See Paul Keegan's get, get becoming very influential now, particularly in the last five minutes or so. He's demanding the ball all over the place. Free kick against Stuart Byrne, who dived in on the other captain own here. I'm sure that's happened on many occasions with various training grounds all over all over Dublin. Stuart Byrne and own here. Great colleagues in their Shelburne days, but just timed that wrong. Uh, here he injury trouble going into the game and he's only gingerly picking himself up now problem is when you get to that age well and you do get a whack it takes you a wee bit longer to recover 33 he's got a long road ahead of him still short tap by Shelley Good ball up by Brennan, dangerously so too, and missed by Rogers. That might have come off a defender, you know. I think it came off Ian Birmingham, but Rogers reacted. Almost opened the door for Bohemians to take the lead. Anto Murphy's long throw, as is his want, and Burning again in a corner, and Bowser ramping up the pressure. Yeah, Gary Rogers, very relieved man. He actually got caught no man's land from that cross from Killian Brennan. He came for it and then he backed off. And uh, I think if it had been anybody else, it looked like a centre defender. If it had been Jason Bourne, it could have been 1-0 down. Keegan to take and it went to the near post and Ryan Guy dominates in the air again. As he always is. Thrown in for Heary, who's recovered but couldn't direct it back into play. This the only medal that he is missing. He even won the shield with Home Farm. 1998. Back in the Home Farm Everton days. This literally is the only domestic medal that he has never won. Here goes Green, but a good cut out by Pender. Quick throw. Powell. And Keegan, good ball for Jason Byrne and a good turn. Now they've got openings here. Chance of the low cross to come in from Anton Murphy. It's another corner kick. The pressure is incessant. Yeah, in the last five or ten minutes, it's been more like the balls that we expected. As I said, Keegan's been a major influence again. Lovely ball into Jason Byrne. Unfortunately for Murphy, it wasn't the best cross. what Brennan does with this one, a good one. In and into the net by Anto Murphy! And it's first blood Bohemians! Absolutely brilliant cross, Will. First class cross. Brilliant flick on by Anto Murphy. I'm just talking about his cross there now. He's got a brilliant head to this and just flicks it in the far corner. You see he jumped between three players. That just shows you the quality of action of the ball where Kevin Brennan's delivered it. He's put it on the proverbial sixpence. Absolutely brilliant goal. Superb header at the near post for Anto Murphy, his first goal of the year. And what a day, what an occasion, what a venue in which to provide it. Earliest goal ever scored by a League of Ireland club in a Satanta Cup final and the second fastest. And it's Anto Murphy who has got it, who was a League Cup winner with St. Pat's the last time they won a trophy, 2003. And certainly been coming well the last five, t five, ten minutes, particularly the last five. They have ratcheted up, the tempo's been up. Keegan's been getting on it, pulling on the strings. And once again, what a ball that was. 
what a ball by Faherty for Paul Byrne, who's through here. And Owen here, he needed every inch of experience that he's gained through the years to get in the way. Yeah, you said it right there, Will. Brilliant covering exactly what you want from your right fullback when the ball's coming down the, the opposite side of the pitch. Only for here he's cover. Young Byrne was in there. Brilliant covering. Ryan Guy will take the throw. Bows have sent out the cavalry just in case. Orthodox and longer. Back in by Pender, who was off balance. And Brian Shelley decided to take away from Barry Murphy in case it was interpreted as a back pass. I know it's very loud here, but that's a couple of times Brian Shelley should have let Bra uh, Barry Murphy have the ball and didn't. There is a lot of noise in the stadium. I don't know where he didn't hear the shout. But Bowes are very fortunate there. That ball just come off. Anto Murphy, actually, he could have bounced anywhere. Pat Bedlam guided Shelburne to the final in their first season here. And it seemed ordained that they would win in their own patch at Tolkien, but it turned out not to be. Back five years later, huge shout of handball so it looked from like it Pat's hand. fans on this side. The only thing was there weren't too many Pats players who were shouting for Will. Rogers got in ahead of Green, but not much to aim at. Couldn't Gareth Cochran control it well, though? Faherty back to Cochran. Three to aim for in the middle, but too close to the Bowes keeper. Like that's not the worst ball in the world there. World there will. Absolutely brilliant ball. It's just dropped in the centre box. Murphy using his hands. What happened here? Was that punched on by? I thought at the time it, it hit somebody's hand. Okay, it sounded like it hit somebody's hand. And when you jump with your hands up in the air like that, you're asking for trouble. Longer field by Guthrie and met by the opposite number, McGuinness. Great hero with European goals for Bowes two seasons ago and another European campaign to come for them. In the next eight weeks, they'll be on the road. You know, the last ten minutes is probably the best I've seen Bowes play when it's been nil-nil. They usually only play like that when they go behind and then they start to end up chasing the game and that's when they really up the tempo. And for the last ten minutes, they've really been at it. And that's all come from Keegan midfield, where he's really up the tempo. But what will they do now? Off in the past, I've seen Pat Villan sit on us and he becomes more defensive. Hopefully that won't be the case. Good start for Bohemians and for Jason Byrne. Who a year ago this weekend looked to have got the winning goal for Bowes against Rovers and then that man Gary Twig popped up twice in the last two minutes and maintained a record that those have never won here. Low effort by Faherty, stopped by Barry Murphy. Faherty netted here the only time that Pats have won at Tallis Stadium. Yeah, he's read the second ball well here. Just been flicked on. Really didn't get a hold of it. Foul on Aaron Green and Shane Guthrie, the offender. Bowes with the advantage. So Murphy's goal after 23 from this man's corner kick. Brilliant to take it. He's had a look at Murphy on the far side. Almost found him too. Kept it in for Glenn Cronin, who's worked hard to win the throw in off in Birmingham, the Ireland under 23 call up. Well, Bowes have certainly, they certainly had more joy on the right-hand side in the first half than they have on the left. We haven't really seen Conor Powell get up the pitch at all. Murphy's throw is long and causing more havoc. Rogers had it and then lost it. Needed Shane Guthrie to hook it away. And the assurance that Pat's had early on is beginning to fizzle away defensively. Birmingham ramming it off Brennan. Goal kick it will be. 
I was talking to John Gill earlier, the coach at uh, St. Pat's, and he was telling me they've eight, eight lads under 25. We just have a look at this. Headers well cleared. And uh, a lot of youngsters out there. And, uh, you know, this is a test of anybody's metal, the final of this, of this magnitude on a stadium like this tonight. Anto Murphy back on the far flank, the right wing again. And a good morning or afternoon or evening to wherever you're watching in various Atlanta channels around the world and in Britain on Premier Sports. Glad you could join us for this fifth Satanta Sports Cup final. It's the 28th All-Ireland final. Overall, those have just won the ones, but that was 65 years ago. Long, long time waiting. On by Paul Byrne, and a good ball for Faherty, but the control wasn't there. Originally supposed to be the only outfield change, but then circumstances took a charge overnight. Paul Byrne has just done enough to get it back to Guy. Faherty working hard. Might come out to Mulcahy, but good solid whip away. Faherty again. Now Guy. He's got five to aim for in the middle. Keegan trying to charge him down, tender and support behind. On the not unorthodox route, Mulcahy couldn't ship it onwards to find his former Bray colleague, Paul Byrne. Yeah, you want somebody with a bit more subtle than Dave Mulcahy getting the ball in those particular positions. Subtle when he wants to be. Uh, he's more a stopper and set the midfield, Will. Subtlety could be Stuart Byrne's middle name. Here's uh, in Birmingham. As the free kick also for Pats. But once again, uh, Will, in terms of uh, Paul Byrne, you know, if they can't get the ball up to him, he's got the beating of the two central defenders, McGuinness and Shelley. And he's very clever in the way he's laying the ball off. That's Too long. Waste. Just a waste, Will. You know, that's the last thing you want. Go straight into the goalkeeper's hands. That's catching practice. Too long, too aimless. No trouble for Barry Murphy, who one Bowes fan was tipping today for a move to England, having lost one Murphy to Ipswich Town in the past six months. That's a from Fox's challenge by Derek Pender. And it's got the Pats fans a good voice again. And they needed it. Rather meaty challenge coming up here. John Curry Pender does well there, Rob's killing Brennan. Last time they met in a cup competition, it was Bo's day. At the I Cup semi in 2008. It was on the way to double. And Pat Fenland's first full year in charge. I say, well, it's a very strange win tonight. Well, the wind's changed direction three or four times in the first 34 minutes. The swirl around a lot. Both ends behind each goal. Left open for uh, temporary seating if needed for big prestige friendlies. As we have seen here with Real Madrid. Got a foot in, but it wasn't enough to interfere. He's got them back in the winning streak as Pat Fenlon. Four trophies already and aiming for a fifth.
Game has eased down a little, which maybe, just maybe, just what Pats needed, considering they were beginning just to be overrun around the time of the goal. Well, the match has died, sort of, and unfortunately, for the neutrals in the last five minutes or so. You know, Bohemians have, um, you know, the tempo's dropped a wee bit. So Pats are basically hanging on, can't really get any pattern, can't get a hold of the ball. It's gone from back to front too early. And Pete's got his work cut out. We see him out there in a the technical area. On by Byrne, but cut away by Brian Shelley. Twice a winner and aiming for three alongside Paul Keegan. Amazing to think that the likes of Jason Byrne and so on have never won this trophy. Brennan's done well. He's never won it either. Couldn't maintain possession. Here goes Guy. Good cut out by Connor Powell. Perseverance the key. Worked out well for Guy. Pender. And who's good on the one off occasion is Pender. He's won two playoffs, but you can say exactly the same about Brian Shelley. It's a wee bit better from Pats there, but they need Stuart Burr and do more of that. Just simple five, ten yard ball, just keep the ball, just keep possession. Guys throw. He's done it again. He's got a lot of height and the distance isn't bad either. Paul Byrne just missed out. It's actually one of the few headers Paul Byrne hasn't, hasn't connected with. Like Guy, Byrne is solid in the air and defensively too when needs be. Just like Jason McGuinness there. Back in by Stuart Byrne, who will receive the return but can't keep it straight. That's one of those, Stuart Byrne scored a number of them down the years. But as the years creep up on you, less and less effective. It's actually probably not what he expected, but it hung in the air. And uh, this Stuart Byrne's effort. Of course, he's just snatched at that. A fair ground attraction for a red letter occasion. Aim for Guy again, and will aim to keep it in. Should he be doing that with a 1-0 down, by the way? Would, the, would that have you tearing your hair out if you were managing him? <laughs> to, eat, to each his own, Will. Uh, you have to... Uh, players, in terms of... of uh, what they do and what they don't. Now, if, you, if you're taking a penalty in an extra time shootout and you try and chip the goalkeeper, then that's a different thing. Bows are down to 10 for the time being. It's Aaron Green, who has been receiving treatment. Yeah, Aaron Green picked up a knock with five minutes ago. He's left Jason Byrne on his own. Yeah, he's back on the pitch now. Fly, but the ricochet was not his friend that time. Cronin missed out. Owned by Cronin, aimed uh, towards Green again, who's still limping, and who looks like he's visibly struggling as well. We might see one or two lads on the uh, on the bench down the bowls. Getting, getting warmed up. Green has limped in towards the middle, awaiting this Keegan free kick. Alan Black has noticed some jostling. Word with the two number fives, Shane Guthrie and Jason McGuinness, but nothing terribly serious. Keegan, it will be Heary on the edge of the area. They're all crammed into a tiny. Swore just on the edge of the box. It's hooked away by Birmingham. With the way the wind's swirling, you know, that's, that's a free kick that Bowles have, have done time after time. Paul Keegan, guy spins round the back. The problem is he's hitting into a very strong wind and he doesn't beat the first man, literally. Cronin with the cross and it went across Green, who barely moved. Powell. Good ball in towards Green, but he was just knocked off the ball again. And 
he's given away the free kick. But he is noticeably struggling when he tries to. I think he tries to he tries to just roll the defender there. He takes his eye off the ball. It's not a smooth rhythm when he tries to get a gallop going, Aaron Green. Uh, started against Monaghan, against uh, Drogheda earlier this season. So for the former St. Francis youth, only his third ever start in Bohemian's colours. And what a day in which to do it. These two do meet again on Friday in the league. Touched on by Fahati, but couldn't find Gareth Coughlin on the overlap. That's great cover from Andrew Murphy there. Great cover because young Coughlin was in. Again, Paul Byrne was doing all the damage. Pender for Guy, and the return went wrong. That's the same surprise, none of the, uh, the subs are warming up with Bose. As Young Green does look as if he's really struggling. I think uh, Pat Bellin's having a, having a word with the physio now, Tony McCarthy. Stuart Byrne has options on this near side, and Ryan Guy it is again. Super cross at 4 to aim for. Goal kick given. Aim for Finney Faherty, who in his time in Connacht football was a uh, regular goal scorer. Worries for Pat Fenlon before half time, maybe. Yeah, he's very unhappy with that last cross. Felt Ryan Guy had far, far too much room. He's very, very angry in the touchline there. With Ryan Guy all the room, he had to put that cross in. No real challenge. Touched on for Green, who's made the pass for Jason Byrne. Green making his way into the middle. He's got a bit of a stride going again. Beyond him, beyond everybody. Flicked on by Kenneth, then helped away by Pender, but only to Killian Brennan. It's a brilliant cross from Jason Byrne. He is a striker, but he's known for this as well. He's seen many of these balls over the last 10, 10 years as well, as well as his goals, the goals that he's made for other people. And Paul Keegan thought he was just going to have a tap in there. It was a Killian Brennan corner from the right, which led to the goal. See what he can do from the left. Aim towards the back post and dangerously, it'll come towards Keegan. Put the centre towards Heary. Glenn Cronin to mop up. And support from Jason Byrne. Not good for Murphy, but Pat said nobody up. Powell short, Cronin long. Too far for Green, but... 1-0 would do both for the moment, surely. On by Paul Byrne, and this is Faherty. Byrne on the chase, but Powell has just got enough. Decided to put it straight out, and here comes Ryan Guy again. Yeah, we all know where this is going, Will. It's going right in the six-yard box. Go through the centre-backs going up. It's a near post along with Paul Byrne. We all know where it's going. How's he going to do it? A lot more direct this time, but there was a sea of white on the edge of the six-yard area. Forward by Birmingham for Paul Byrne again, but Anto Murphy just did enough to get the head in. He was leaning in too, but on the right side of legality. Keegan too long for Green, though. It was actually a very, very important header by Amdon Murphy there. Very brave header as well. Paul Byrne checked his stride, but McGuinness just did enough to get away, but not far. And this is Coughlin who's down and in a very, very tasty position. This is Didier Drogba territory. Yeah, but they don't have Didier Drogba. I'm not sure about this free kick at all. I think your Coughlin's playing for it. You know, you can see here, maybe he's put his hand across, but I think he was looking for it. And I think the referee's bought that. It's a soft free kick. 
Cochrane will take it himself. Everybody congregated around the penalty spot. Barty was standing in an offside position. He went direct anyway. Barry Murphy followed it all the way. And there's going to be a change for Bohemians before half time by the looks of it. This was the free kick though. Decent free kick actually. Looks like Paddy Mann. Paddy Madden's coming on for, for Young Green. Could only be for Green. And McGuinness has committed the foul on Vinnie Faherty. And just before half time, packs of their tails up again. Pender, and it's a good ball for Mulcahy on the turn. But didn't Keegan do brilliantly? And Paul Byrne was in, and McGuinness blocked it superbly. Yeah, he's been their best player, Paul Byrne. Just brilliantly here. And it took two both players to get him out, Jason McGuinness. Birmingham to take. Plenty of movement inside, but no redheads. Paul Byrne was charging in and pushed. No time for that substitution. Paddy Madden was about to come on, but we'll have to wait for the second half. Anton Murphy's goal after 23 minutes means our cup final has had a first half goal. Superb header at the near post from Killian Brennan's right wing corner. And it is first blood to Bohemians and a half time lead. It's St. Patrick's Athletic nil. Bohemians won. The change we were anticipating just before half time has been made by Pat Fenlon. Aaron Green withdrawn injured during the half time break. So Paddy Madden will start the second half in the white of Bohemians. St. Patrick's Athletic looking to plug their one goal deficit, having not won a major trophy since 2003. Pete Mahan has never won a cup final as a manager. Goes under the grasp of Birmingham, but he won it in the second attempt past uh, Jason Byrne. Attempted first touch for Paddy Madden, but Kenno will hold him off well for the goal kick. Well, certainly that young man's not going to weaken bows. He's going to strengthen them. Puts a lot of effort in, and very, very quick. The only thing about it is the wind is blowing, and bows favour this half. And the ball's going to run away from him like it did there, instead of holding up into the wind. Another under-23 call-up as well is Paddy Madden. And that will be a game to look forward to in a few weeks' time when Ireland play England. Bowes starting on the offensive in this second half too. Throw for Connor Powell and a good one, and he's found Madden with a chance to cross. There's only two waiting in the middle, taking on Pender, and another throw, making progress. Young know, Madden had more time than he thought there, he'd actually escaped the Morgans. It's been patched and switched off. Good throw by Powell for Madden. Has got cold, has got windy, even though the sun is still largely out here. 20 years ago this weekend, St. Francis reached the cup final under Pete Mahan, and tonight they're having their 20th anniversary dinner, and Pete is missing it. He's got other things to do. He was in charge of UCD for the 2005 League Cup final. First one we covered when Derry won it. He'll drop for Coughlin, and a great try! Fabulous effort from young Coughlin here. I think it's, it's Stuart Byrne, maybe he's got over, so Ryan Guy's got over his own. Hit that with a bit of bend on it. You can see the ball actually swerving, he hits it across it. Which he brings the ball down behind Murphy. Great opportunity, great chance. Four or five times Chelsea hit the woodwork in the first half against Portsmouth, and now... Pats have their closest chance of the game. Just went beyond Anto Murphy, but was backing into Birmingham anyway. So instead of the throw, it's a Pats free kick, which Birmingham will take. 
Well, I, I'm like Anton Murphy, he's having a discussion with the referee. I think it was a foul the other way, actually. Headlong aim for Faherty, not as far as him. It's beyond Paul Byrne, who's got the flick on. Good header on by Mulcahy. Might just fall for Faherty here. Peary trying to keep him away at the expense of the throw. And the voices you can hear are all from Winchicor. Yeah, they come out with their tails up. Certainly, we hit the bar. It tends to be getting an adrenaline rush for a few minutes. Birmingham's throw for Faherty. In danger of being crowded out, but did very, very well. Birmingham couldn't keep up the momentum, though, and was crowded out. Keegan's got the clearance away, aimed at Paddy Madden. Cronin got it away, and Jason Byrne is on the charge. Madden waiting in the middle, deflected towards him. And Guthrie was in exactly the right place to deny. Powell with a chance to restart, it got past Guy. On by Brennan, but denied. Paul Byrne with not a lot of support. Door wouldn't open for him on that occasion either. Splendid season he's having. Two goals in this competition, both in the semi-final. Legs against Sligo. Anton Murphy on the charge. Got tangled in with Gareth Cochlett and belatedly it is Pat's free kick for the pull down of the man wearing the lilac boots we'll become so familiar with during the World Cup. Good tackling back by young Cochlin. Does really well here. Not sure about those boots though. Get used to them, you'll be seeing a lot of them next month. again towards Paul Byrne and Jason McGuinness got the head away and Ian Birmingham doesn't want to waste any time at all. I know a lot of managers don't like the multicolored boots but they're a great aid if you're a commentator. Way by Murphy. On by Cronin. Good ball, Killian Brennan. Madden all on his own, awaiting in the middle and will have to continue to wait. Powell has found him. The control let him down and there was a Loose footed Ryan Guy, which has given Pats another free kick. Very frenetic now in the last minute or so. Need somebody to get the foot on it. I heard Peter Hutton talking about, about Pete Mahan maybe getting Mulcahy a burn to push on. It's a wee bit there that they're both pushing on. And they can be caught on the break by both. Guy. Sure burn alongside, but he went to more direct route. Aimed for another burn, but couldn't find Paul. Found Stewart indirectly. And it ran past him. Foul on Anton Murphy, and that will be the first card of this cup final. It'll be against Ian Birmingham, who stopped the break of Anton Murphy. Very untidily, too. I think Anton Murphy is very silly here, because I think he's gone on the ground because he's felt the touch. And they were actually three against three. And he, and he should have stayed on his feet. In Birmingham, the first player booked in this cup final. Shelley's long free kick. Hasn't turned another one, though. Long clearance upfield by Guy, but got his own front men out. Bit of power behind the back pass by Shelley as well, but Nothing to trouble Barry Murphy. A cup final which is bubbling up. Shelley in the way, but Faherty had come out wide. Support from Guy. Really did fly in, did Shelley? And it's a red ball. And it's in a very, very prime position for them too. Yeah, Brian Shelley gets thrown out of the middle. Found himself out of the touchline. And lost the ball, lost his rag a bit, and jumped in. Pat Fenlon's not happy with that decision, he's having a right go with the fourth official. But I think Alan Black's made the right decision, I think it was a free kick. 
Guy is one of those over it. Birmingham also. Birmingham would be hitting the in swing. And it's Guy, and it's a good floater. Met the head of Shane Guthrie, and Barry Murphy again didn't want to take any chance that it would have dipped under the crossbar. Well, the cross that comes over very, very high. I think Barry Murphy did the right thing. I think that was coming off the crossbar back for an easy tap in for Guthrie. Had to make sure, did the former Rovers man, and it's Coughlin with it, and it's deep, and Murphy punched away superbly again. In by Dave Mulcahy, strike was by Guy. Nothing doing involving Conor Kenna. He's not of the same opinion, though. I think you can see the both players are very happy with Conor Kenna. I think he took a bit of a dive here. And by the looks of the expression, the body language of Kenna, I think he's right as well. You can see it here. I mean, that's a, that is a dive. That's a yellow card. I mean, he's touched it, just nicked the ball past the players. You can even see him running, trying to get out the ball. He knows himself, he's just dived over. Jason Byrne was massively unhappy at that. Usually a very honest player as well, Conor Kenna. Could just claim that it was a stumble, and Birmingham has stumbled there. Anton Murphy's been letting down the right. Three in support. Birmingham's done enough to stall it. Back for Cronin. Charged down against Kenna. Involved at both ends. In the right place to deny. Now here's Heary. Well, Cronin got that opportunity because Stuart Byrne overcovered his fullback. And he left Cronin free inside. It was between the devil and the deep blue sea, and he was nowhere. Now it's lively. Heary's long throw was touched on by Anto Murphy. Coughlin was on the chase, but denied. Man who scored midweek in the League Cup against Bray in the 2 0 win. I have to say, well, it's really great atmosphere in the ground at the minute. Pats fans beside us. Really, really vocal in the second half. It's amazing to think it's the first Dublin derby in this final. Dublin clubs never won it. Headed on by Powell. And Ryan Guy's attempted long clearance aimed at the two front men. Went to Rye from Guy. Deal which runs until the end of the year. A deal which was being trashed out with Tranmere Rovers in the pre-season falling through because they couldn't get a work permit, as tends to happen a lot in the English game. Pats will be grateful he stayed on, a lot of neutrals too. Here's Paddy Madden. He surely will be the next big thing. That's good play from Bowles there. You know, seven rate passes, just keeping the ball, keep it simple. And Madden trying to find Byrne, who ghosted in. Here his contribution was almost critical. Byrne continued the run in, but they're beginning to knit it together up front. Great combination between Byrne and Madden. They Best are passes concerned. to play the whole night. Great dummy by Jason Byrne. Back at the aim for Guy, who's covering a lot of ground now, and who is liable to pop up anywhere. And Madden narrowly caught offside in this near side by Andrew Neeson. It's actually a lovely ball, but Gillian Brennan put a bit of backspin on the ball as well. Unfortunately, young Madden just couldn't keep his run. free kick aimed long and Paul Byrne was up almost fell for Coughlin who stayed up there Byrne with the layoff couldn't find Faherty on the turn and away by own hearing but Pats are finding their rhythm again and their confidence is raising McGuinness the latest to stab away and they're playing the possession game themselves now Maybe that stealing in of Conor Kenna a few moments ago has given them a bit of extra confidence. Way that he found his way around the back. It's going to be a Ryan Guy throw. Brennan in front. 
I'm not sure about Killian Brown stand there. I don't think he's having any effect on this at all. And that time he didn't, and it's a long throw. The goalkeeper's been is cleared off the line. It was Coughlin's chance. And it's been absolutely smashed away by Killian Brennan. He didn't care where. And that time Murphy was beaten. Fantastic throw, which is in the mix. Goalkeeper's nowhere. I'm not too sure who gets a block on it. Shelley off the line. Shelley off the line to deny Coughlin. Cronin. I think young Coughlin thought it was his birthday there. He's just ready to tap it into an empty net. Saints fan as a boy, Gareth Coughlin. He was 12 years old the last time they won a trophy. Would have been surely the ultimate dream at this stage in his career to have netted a level there and to have given it a platform for Pats to press on in the remaining half hour. Yeah, young Coughlin's face when the ball arrived at his feet, he thought he just had a top in. And a brilliant challenge by Shelley. That's why Brian Shelley has won so much. Including a league title under Roddy Collins for Bowes in 2001 in the black and white days. Out by Heary. Pats are raising their game now. Well, we see Ryan Guy come over again. We're going to use this to launch it into the box again. Guthrie's up as well. Connor Ken has gone into the box. I expect a long one. It has been produced. And Barry Murphy didn't come this time. Way by Heary. Another throw for Ryan Guy to take. It's the one thing with Barry Murphy. Well, he's not the biggest goalkeeper. And he's coming through an awful lot of bodies to try and get this ball. He's better staying on his line. Here we go again. No touch on from Byrne, but it fell for Kenneth. And ballooned over the top of the rebound. Mulcahy snatched at it. But they're getting chances together now, Pat. Yeah, and as this match progressed as well, the last 50, 20 minutes, again, it just dropped to Conor Kenner. Unfortunately, it's on his left peg. It's a swinger, as they say. And then it's blasted widely over. Great opportunity. One nil, an uncomfortable lead for Pat Fenlon. Pats have hit the bar. They've had it ever cleared off the line, and Gareth Coughlin has had them both. One thing when you have chances like that, Will, it puts, it, you know, it puts a doubt in the in the defenders, doubt in the goalkeeper. Ken has been fouled, it's a free kick. He's getting massively involved for St. Patrick's Athletic now, and there's a bit of niggle beginning to develop as well. I which, think there's uh, a bit of afters with, with Cronin and Kenneth. Wasn't spotted by a linesman who was three yards away. Alan Black did, though, he was further away. FIFA referee now, and all the experience is showing. Birmingham with a good ball in, and too high. Ankle ligament injury for Aaron Green to end his first Major Cup final. Signing from Galway United at the start of the season. Now Steve McGahey has just had the chance there. Unfortunately, again, has just come on a swinger on his left peg. He's just thrown the leg at it. Never troubled Barry Murphy. And in dive Coughlin, and he was very, very late. It's yellow. And Jason McGuinness in pain. I think he's just, it's one of those just missed time. One player's clearing the ball, the other's trying to block the ball. And one just clatters into the other. But Bowes get, need, need to get control of this ball again, get, get up the pitch. They have dropped off far too far, defending numbers. Too many players back behind the ball. So Garrett Coughlin, who's hit the bar, had one cleared off the line. A yellow card for St. Patrick's Athletic. For Gareth Coughlin. Went 
in on Jason McGuinness, who is going off the pitch. There will be a bit of treatment needed for him, but Coughlin's yellow has made it two, four packs in this fight. Keegan for Cronin. McGuinness back in one piece again too far for Anton Murphy. You know, it's one thing that does surprise me about Bowes at times, Will, you know, with the, the, the quality and experience that they have on the pitch, that they allow themselves to be pushed back and allow themselves to, to hoof it out and defend the numbers. They are too good a team to be playing back. You know, get on the ball and pass it and keep possession of the ball. Killian Brennan has got Jason Byrne waiting in the middle, but well anticipated by Gary Rogers. Yeah, I think it's a good decision there for Gary Rogers. I think Jason Byrne was favoured to win that. And he had to get the ball. Guthrie sold the pass telegraphed. Out by Powell, but very cleverly kept in play by Gareth Coughlin. Anticipation of a high level from him also. Needs to be in a cup final. See, that looks very simple there, Will. That's just a simple ball, but Keegan's kept possession of the ball. Two forward, and Byrne has let it run towards Madden. It's a great ball forward. And looked to have opened the door for Bohemians. But their main men are in the usual positions. Madden controlling. Powell in support. Aimed for Jason Byrne, who had a fine few months with Cardiff City the season they reached the cup final, but came back to the Irish game and has won loads of medals since then. It's a wee bit of inexperience there from Madden. He should have just kept the ball. To give the ball to Cronin, switch it, switch it from the left hand side to the right hand side, and just keep possession of the ball. Good hook away by Kenna. Jason Byrne with a superb crossfield ball. Controlled by Killian Brennan. Madden waiting in the middle. And he'll continue to wait. Upfield by Mulcahy. A good idea. But the Referee's challenge was kick. late. And it will be a free kick from the pass back four. And they will make a change just as Paul Byrne was breaking forward. It is he who is about to go off to be replaced by Alex Williams, who always seems to score on the big match occasion. Paul Burns' contribution in this competition has been major. Two goals in the semi-finals, but his final has come to an end. Very surprised at that. It's been a handful for, for McGuinness and Shelley at the back. Some of the flick-ons, particularly from the long throw wins, he has been a threat. Very surprised at that substitution, I have to say. On towards Faherty, McGuinness was there first. Another St. Patrick's athletic corner. Another rise in belief. And just look at the amount of bodies that bows the back. It's one of the difficulties when you have that. Well, it's the same decision. Nobody's sure who's got who. Birmingham to take. Williams is already causing trouble. That was headed towards him by Guthrie. Came right in on goalkeeper Barry Murphy right at the start. Well, Guthrie ended up being picked up by Conor Powell, and that's the problem that you have when there's so many bodies and nobody's designated a player. And that's a mismatch, if ever there was one. Another long run up by Guy. Throw to match. And there may be another. Decided to control instead. Seven waiting for him in the middle, but he found a white shirt. Money up, but they'll have to funnel back very quickly. Pats, not now, they won't. Foul by Connor Powell. 
free kick it is, and they can push everyone up again. Silly challenge it was too. You know, he had no need to go and win the ball. All they had to do was stand up. Pat's player was struggling to get control of the ball. And now it's going to be launched back on top of me. John Gill calling the free kick for Stuart Byrne. Guy with the layoff for Birmingham. Man down in the area, and that's a problem. And that's Kenneth. In the wars again. It's very noticeable, Will, that, that the Barry Murphy in the Bows goal has not left his line since he was caught in no man land about 50, 20 minutes ago. He's stuck on his line. The water bottles are being thrown around the sideline as well now as both managers show their tension. More caution from Barry Murphy these days. It was an awkward fall, and maybe a man going down on top of him as well. He was sort of sandwiched, but not deliberately. Play resumes with one I think of those one modern of his own players. Well, did as much damage as, as Jason McGuinness. Drop balls. Run by Rogers. Faherty, major deflection. Again off McGuinness that time, in by Guy, and this time Barry Murphy did come and did play. Good play by Murphy. His confidence wouldn't be the best in the last 10, 15 minutes. But that'll do it, no harm there. We're about to have another change. And it's Santo Murphy who departs. And Mark Quigley, a Former Pats man, 148 games and 36 goals in the red, will replace another former St. Pats man. Mark Quigley, I guarantee you, is coming on with 20 minutes remaining. Yeah, I got a hot reception from the fans below us here. It was the Pats for the last two or three years. Did really well for Pats. Hasn't really settled at Daily Man so far this season. I would think that Anton Murphy must have, have some kind of, of knock because I think he's going to be vital. It's not bad in the air as we've seen for the goal. And I would imagine that Bowes will have to defend a few set pieces. Or maybe something from play. Murphy's come out and dealt with it sufficiently. Mark Quigley's arrival means there's uh, another attacking angle for Bohemians in this cup final. But it's Paul Keegan leading the way with Quigley on the overlap. The St. Pat's voices will let you know it's him. Cronin. Brennan, let it run. Here he's cross. Caught by the wind. He's well, oh, it's a better player than that, Will. A lot better player. I'm very, very surprised at that. Again, it's a case of just keep the ball. You know, there are, because Pats are really pushing for it now in the last 20 minutes, there are, there are a lot of empty spaces out there. Too high that time for Guy, who may be brilliant in the air, but he's, he's not that spectacular. So left about seven foot have got there. They still believe, but they have 19 minutes for their side to equalise. Send us to extra time. Put out by Guthrie. So the arrival of Mark Quigley, the second change in the game for Bowes. Pats made just the one there. Big changes having to come pre-match. Out by Glenn Cronin, but the clock continues to tick. Very poor play again for Bowes. You know, Glenn Cronin got himself too close to the thrower. Schoolboy stuff. Uh, an elbow and Vinnie Faherty, it is a free kick for Pats. Yeah, Owen Heary led with the elbow there. You can just see it here, yes, yeah, the elbow in the back of the head. Very fortunate not to get yellow for that. Free kick by Birmingham is long. Too far for Guy, Kenner's got embroiled again. 
Peary away for Jason Byrne with a spectacular clearance and Madden has the pace to trouble Derek Pender and will stay up there by Stuart Byrne. Should point out as well that uh, former Bohemians player, but he became much better known as a journalist, Frank Johnston, 50 years with the Sunday people, sadly passed away today. Rest in peace. 17 minutes of tense cup final football remaining at least. Burn for Williams. Play on. Here goes Guy. Low effort. Williams is still down as well. But Brennan with a chance to break for Bones. And a good break for Quigley. Madden was in support on the overlap. Burn is always waiting in the middle. You'd expect nothing else. Really good play by Killian Brennan there. Well, John Paul just giving the ball away. Looked very shaky, the entire match Conor Powell has been in and out of the bull side over the last six or seven weeks. Confidence doesn't look to be the best. Birmingham again for Guy. Williams has quite a record of popping up and scoring on the big occasion, normally his debut. Birmingham on the overlap again and he's forced the corner off Brian Shelley and here we go again. Yeah, great run from young Birmingham against a very tired Kenny Bremen who's just gone run 50, 60 yards. And was caught ball watching the ball's inside. It's a very, very tight run from Brennan. And unfortunately, Brennan wasn't able to make the best of that cross. Bowe scored from a corner at this end. Not this side, though. Coughlin swinging in. Headed out very sharpish by McGuinness. Hooked away by Jason Byrne. It looked of all people back defending and stoutly. Williams couldn't find Mulcahy. Stuart Byrne. Absolutely everybody up apart from the Pats goalkeeper Gary Rogers. He's the only man in his half. Goalkeeper's come and missed it. But Williams couldn't pounce. Man down. Play halted. Barry Murphy's come out again. He's got nowhere near the ball. Well, absolutely nowhere near the ball. And he's come through a lot of players. It's Kenner again, is it? I think it is. We'll have a look here. Yeah, I think he's come in and amongst, I think it's Jason McGuinness and, and Murphy got it in the sandwich again. He is as much in the wars now as he has been all game and he is going where most defenders fear to thread. Williams tried and the overlap and was bravely denied. But it is a headache for him and if more serious, a headache for Pete Mahan also. You know, you have to give credit to, to, to Pats, the way they've, they've battled and they put Bowes under pressure. But I have to say, that the way the Bowes play when they're in situations like this, well, it does puzzle me with players of the quality that they have, that they're pushed back so far and they're reduced to just hooking it up the pitch. And Jason Byrne blocked the follow-up by Williams as well. Two great blocks in a row. This man has always been a big fan. Leading scorer in the league this season on six was just denied the golden boot last season by a man who normally plays his football here. Who we will see live in a couple of weeks' time, a couple of Saturdays when Bowes face Rovers, but these two face themselves again in the league on Friday night, which we'll have live for you. There's a trophy at the end of this one. Bowes free kick. Well, that's been the first opportunity we've had in a while for, for the Bowes. That's the push up. Push pats in. She pats back. There's Alex Williams. Hasn't been the best of form in the last two or three weeks, but he is a bundle of energy. And you'll always get 100% from him. He's got three this season, Williams. He arrived midsummer last campaign the Scots and had a good uh, ratio of a goal every two games which is similar to that that continues chipping away at the top three in the league scorers chart having entered the top ten around this time last year up by Harry who's hobbling and 
challenge from Williams. It's a quick throw for Birmingham. Kenneth, who has recovered. Cut out by Keegan, who's already won two St. Anthony Sports Cup medals and, like Brian Shelley, would make it a record three if it stays like this. Jason Burns control, quickly presenting himself. Pender making life difficult. There's a white ball. It's an old head there, Will. An old head just killing it in the corner for a few seconds. A lot of observers who have said he came back from Cardiff City, a much better, much fitter player. Miles control let him down that time, though. 11 minutes for Bohemians to hang on and win their first All-Ireland Cup since a long, long time ago. 1945, they beat Belfast Celtic in aggregate. Had reached the final two years earlier. Finished 2-2 at the end of two legs. No penalty shootouts back then. Shamrock Rovers denied Bohemians on corners. Burn again, he's been influential as always in the middle for Pats. Madden receiving from Keegan. Good calm, assured passing for Bohemians. They're not getting themselves into trouble, not panicking when the space is tight. But guess what's happened to him here? Here goes Faherty. Good charge. Williams waiting in the middle. That's going to roll out. They have a throw, they have hope, well, they have Faherty a chance. Could, sorry, Will, Faherty a great opportunity here because he doesn't realise that Owen here is giving up the ghost. I think he falls over here and he had more time than he thinks. You know, there he slipped over and he was free. He's played the ball too early. Birmingham wanted to take, but instead he's left it for Ryan Guy. Big options here, Birmingham has gone to the back post. Wouldn't find him, came off the... Head of Gareth Coughlin. Faherty was up there too. Once again, it's a good ball in. Great long throw. Great weapon to have in any armory. Unfortunately, Faherty doesn't get enough on it. Straight at the goalkeeper. Coughlin long aimed at Faherty, who's had a superb run. They've really spread the goals around this season, Pats. Paul Byrne is five, Faherty four, Guy four. Alex Williams and Coughlin of three apiece. Those have relied on their front men a lot. Jason Byrne with six, Madden with three. A man who's scored a lot in this competition this season, on the bench with four, Rafa Kutara. What a man he would be to bring on to defend a win the lead with eight minutes to go. Well, St. Pats is really going to push Bowes back in the last uh, five minutes or so of this game. They will get an opportunity, but again, Bowes are going to be dangerous on the break. They meet again in six days' time in Inchicore. Still firmly in the bats in this Atlanta Sports Cup final. And it's Faherty who's making life difficult for Shelley. Just the man recovered well enough. Another throw coming. A yeah, good recovery. Good recovery from Brian Shelley. And it's going to be Guy again. And it's going to be Long again. He's picking up all the skills. Seems to have a new one every season. Guy on the zone on this near wing, but a lot more direct aim to Guthrie. Did well to keep it in and find Guy. And he's got six in the middle waiting for him. Great header by Jesse McGuinness. 
fantastic header. Wasn't a bad ball, actually. Guys, cross is good. In jump Birmingham. They're throwing everything at Bowes now. But we'll have to track back for a second because Paddy Madden's done brilliantly. And here's Keegan, who's got the strength to evade Mulcahy. And one burn will deny another. Birmingham, seven minutes to get on level terms. Seven minutes to get back into this cup final. Guy, superb. Decent cross, teed up for Fahati once more. Stuart Byrne will go the same route down this left for Ryan Guy. Cross with a lot of curl, Williams was at the back post but couldn't get there and Derek Pender has never scored for St. Patrick's Athletic. Well you can see why there Will. I mean there's no technique involved there at all, that's just a bit of the head stagger there. But it's very noticeable in the last five ten minutes or the here I see him signal to the, the, the post bench at the minute. He's really really struggling and he hasn't been able to get close to Ryan Guy over here. I think he wants to come off. Yes big change here and Cretaro is coming on. I think they might even be chasing, well, I think Jason Burns going on. But I think Owen here is going to go off as well. Well, it's their third change. And it's Jason Byrne, who was walking up and who's being refused, but is being told by Alan Black he is going to have to go off. But was that the intended change? Well, all the same, Kutaro was on. Jason Burns got finalists come to a close. The clock fellas telling Owen Heary to stay, but Owen Heary wants to come off. And he's uh, feeling his hamstring. He's been struggling in the last five minutes or so. First touch for Kutaro. Goal hero for Sliger Rovers over so many campaigns and finding the net with good regularity. For Bohemians also. He's got a friskiness about him. Eric Pender knows all about that. Back for Quigley. Brennan had a bit of space and an idea. Quigley. Katara. Madden's the only one waiting in the middle amongst a sea of red. not the only one struggling I think Jason McGuinness has just gone down in the halfway line having played that long ball forward for Glenn Cronin so if they are to scramble over the line with victory it would be with quite a few walking wounded to face the same opposition again on Friday on by Guy firm header onwards by Brian Shelley but too firm and now he's down they're all struggling. And now it's really kicking off. And it involved Vinny Faherty. And there might just have been a slap. So with Garth Cronin, very silly boy as well. We're getting involved in the first place. And I think Faherty's retaliated. I mean, Cronin's walking away, but, but uh, he was heavily involved in this. Alan Black needs a lot of wisdom here. He's officiated in the Champions League. International football. Did well Sweden a few months ago and is going to wait to decide on the outcome. Well, this is what happened, this is how it erupted. Well, it's actually a silly, it's a silly challenge for Brian Shelley. You know, he doesn't have to win the ball. You know, and here, Gareth Cronin grabs him by the throat, you know, and then he slapped him. I mean, I'd be amazed if these two guys get away with this. Well, he's calling. It's the wrong player. He is. It's the wrong player. I think Vinny Fahard is saying, say, telling them, I think he's telling the referee Al Black that it's not Kelly Brennan. 
Killian Brennan. This is Glenn Cronin and Vinny Faherty being spoken to. Killian Brennan has remained there. There's nothing really that involved Brennan at the time, so he's been exonerated. They all have. You can all play on. There will be changes for Pats, and two of them. They're bringing off Gareth Coughlin, first of all. Connor Sinnott, the former Wexford Youth player, is replacing him. Uh, they're also bringing on Derek Doyle, signing from Shelburne in place of Dave Mulcahy. So those changes coming with two minutes to go. So, where were we? Free kick it is, Stuart Byrne. 60 seconds of normal time remaining. Long by Byrne, and it's got too much length. And it's beyond Conor Kenna. He's just driven that into the wind, unfortunately. It's just overrun Conor Kenna. All day that ball's been holding up, unfortunately for Pats. It's just Stuart Byrne just drilled that too well, and it's actually gone through the wind. So, all six changes have been made. Gareth Coughlin and Dave Mulcahy withdrawn, and Connor Sinnott and Derek Doyle are the two men on. Both pre-season signings, Sinnott from Wexford Utes, Doyle from Shelford. Such major national interest in the first division these days, because, nationally speaking, that's where all the clubs are. Head from Birmingham. And out by Paul Keegan, who couldn't keep it straight. And still opportunities. And there should be a few added minutes because of that head-to-head uh, -head a few moments ago. On by Sinnott. Touched on by Derek Doyle, but to no avail. Four added minutes at the end of this cup final. Guy, that should be a little bit of extra belief for Pats but not if the ball is in their half. And have gone out by the time it had arrived on the far flank. In stoppage time, man of the match time. OK, I think there'll be some decent performances. Coughlin and Paul Byrne for, for St. Pat's. I think Jason Burns played really well. Killian Brennan's put in the shift as well. But my man of the match, I think it's uh, controlled and dictated the face of the match. My man of the match is Paul Keegan, the Bohemian's midfield play. Another superb cup final for Paul Keegan, who's won two of these medals already. On course to win a third. And look who's got the ball. In precisely the right sector of the pitch to cause further damage. Quigley has won a corner kick, and this is precisely where Bohemians wanted to stay. It's brilliant from Keegan again. Just stayed on the ball. He'd no need to pass the ball, just carry it with him and play it at the right time. And that's exactly what he's done the entire match. Well, he's done it so often in the past, he has won every major honour in the domestic game. Two leagues, two of these Atlanta Sports Cups. Quigley. Against the club whose colours he wore with great distinction for so long. Midway through stoppage time. Two minutes for Pats to save themselves. Send the game to extra time, but they won't do it that way. It's long by Quigley and Cronin on the chase. And Connor Sinnott didn't deal with it well. But there's no need to plunge the knife any deeper, just to let the seconds tick away will do from a bohemian point of view. That's one of the great things about young Madden. You know, he's got terrific pace. But the one thing he does do is he does the work back and he chases a piece of paper. Time for action for St. Patrick's Athletic. Good long ball by Stuart Byrne and another one maybe on the way from Connor Kenner, who's ploughed a long way up front, but that's ploughed too far. And those bohemians fans on the far flank will be joyous. I have to say, Will, both sets of fans have been fantastic tonight. It's been a brilliant atmosphere in Tallinn. 
You know, the stadium looks like a real football stadium. The supporters will come out in numbers tonight, and it's been a terrific advertisement for League of Ireland football. And a terrific pitch. Which does help cup finals quite a bit. Madden could be in here. Rogers away. Williams has opened the door and Faherty strike. Stopped well by the big barn door, that is Jason McGuinness. But it's a free kick. Right in front of goal. Right at the end. Again, that's exactly what you don't want, a soft free kick. Everybody's going to be piled forward. Gary Richards, the goalkeeper's making his way forward again. You know, there, you don't have to do that. I mean, if anything, that would have been a foul the other way. Everybody's up. It's a power play for Pats, if you like. They've sent Gary Rogers, the goalkeeper, up. Everybody's in the area. Connor's in it with it. And he's found Rogers, and he ran into his own man. And it's away by Keegan. Rogers is back, but it's not enough. And for the first time in 65 years, Bohemians are all Ireland champions. Their first attempt at Sports Cup. And Pat Benland beaten in the final with Shelburne in 2005 is a winner five years on Barry Murphy who joined from Shamrock Rovers Rafa Kutaro who didn't get to play much longer than ten minutes Bright Shelley will have his third medal and Paul Keegan likewise a superb victory in what was a brilliant showpiece cup final it was a tremendous occasion Super advertisement for the domestic game. Marvellous contest with quite a dramatic conclusion. Winning goal scored after 23 minutes from Anto Murphy. And the Satanta Sports Cup final finishes St. Patrick's Athletic nil. Bohemians won the goal from Anto Murphy. Bob Conway with the MC in duty tonight for this Satanta Sports Cup final. And up they come one by one. He was a hero here for many, many seasons. Player of the Year and Young Player of the Year in 05, Barry Murphy. Wasn't the best game though, Will. Wasn't the best game for Barry Murphy tonight. But he's a winner and it didn't cost him. And they've been called up in terms of number Connor Powell, Jason McGuinness, all receiving their medals from Milo, Paul Keegan, who's up on the plinth again, and before him, Hanto Murphy, that superb header. He and Killian Brennan were exchanging wings, and then brilliant interchange to produce the goal. Jason Byrne at last wins the Satanta Sports Cup. Thought he was terrific tonight as well, Will. Good performance. What a ball Killian Brennan put into the goal. It was one of those, you know, very, very difficult to defend. Paddy Madden and Glenn Cronin and heroes all in Pipsburg tonight. And whether you have been watching in Pipsburg or Pimlico or Bamako, wherever you've been, we've uh, very much appreciated your company and Bohemians will very much appreciate this triumph because now under Pat Fenland they have won everything. Paul Keegan has won everything too. So many different clubs, it's uh, tremendous. Scored in the cup final against Cork in 05. Mark Rossiter, who didn't feature today. Rafa Cotaro, who featured for the last 10 minutes, who was in Sligo colours when this competition started. Paddy Madden, what a brilliant, lively sub. He was, and he will continue to be. A red and black night across Tala. The first time they've ever won in this stadium. Three visits and three defeats in the league previously. And it's always sore if you're a loser. It's one of the worst feelings in the game of football, Will. Standing there watching the opposition getting the trophy. Pat Fenland. Finally wins this competition, finally gets his medal. And Liam O'Brien and Collie and all the backroom team. 
They all want their place on the plinth, but Pat Fenlon's never really been a man for the spotlight, so he's decided to take the side door. It's the first time ever Bohemians have won an All-Ireland Cup since the 40s. The first Dublin winners of this competition. The League of Ireland champions are the All-Ireland champions. And it's Bohemians. And now they have won everything under Pat Vellett. The defence of the League Cup going awry midweek, but now they have a greater prize. A championship hat-trick to aim for. Success breeds success.